Hi guys, or bonjour I should say, we're here in Paris at the Studio Bleu with the amazing Gary Lucas. Known from uh, Captain Beefheart, Jeff Buckley, Gods and Monsters and tons of other things as well. Can you tell us a little bit how you, you started playing guitar and uh, what got you into playing guitar and music in the first place? Well, I started to uh, hear music in my head, first of all, but uh, I didn't know how to express it on an instrument at all and I was kind of clueless. But my father, God bless him, came quite out of the blue at the age of nine, when I turned nine, and said, how would you like to play a musical instrument and how about the guitar? I remember asking, you know, around for sheet music so I could like learn the guitar solo. Yeah. Do you read the uh, music? Yeah, but I, you know, try not to. Also, I like to improvise a lot yeah. within all of my playing. To be, you know, in a more rigid context is appropriate at times, and I've done classical music. I actually played the lead guitar in the European premiere of Leonard Bernstein's Mass. Really? Yeah, with the Yale Symphony Orchestra when I was at college. My first real desire was to join Captain Beefheart. I saw his debut show in New York, and I couldn't believe the way he was treating guitars and the sounds he was getting were so cool. And I was a DJ in college, so I was talking about how great Beefheart was all the time, and he actually came and played a concert at Yale. So they asked me if I would interview him. So. I did, and therefore, you know, I became friends with him. Eventually, I got to a point where I thought that I could play for him. And it was at a point when he was playing with Frank Zappa, doing this Bongo Fury yeah. tour. Yeah. And uh, I went and saw him and came, you know, and he remembered me, you know, I hadn't seen him in a year or so. And then we went out to eat. In the middle of this meal at midnight, I said, by the way, I play the guitar. Why didn't you tell me, man? Come on, I gotta hear it. Bring your guitar up to Boston. I'm playing up there with Frank. Met him after his show with Zappa. Went back to his hotel room and auditioned. And he said, yeah, that's great. We gotta do something. But it was kind of vague, you know. And I had plans anyway to go to the Far East. So uh, when I got back after this adventure, I rang Beefheart and he said, okay, well, we gotta do it. Yeah, we're gonna do it. And he sent me music. And it was this guitar solo piece called Flavor Bud Living. I went out to LA and recorded it in just one take. And this put me on the map as a guitarist because it was my first appearance in a sort of a big yeah. label, Virgin Records. Two years later, I did another record where I played on all the tracks. I was in, the, at that point, the Magic Band, his band. That is how I really you know, got started. And then there was a hiatus. He quit music in 84, said, I just want to be a painter. So, you know, that was when we parted company. I was at a point where I was afraid to really throw m all my energies into music because I was insecure about the ability to support myself. There was a club in New York called the Knitting Factory. And I met the owner of the club and he said, oh, Beef Arts guitarist, well, you could do a show here. And I put a solo repertoire together. And in 1988, in June, I did a show there and it was packed. I got two or three encores at the end of my solo show and they gave me 600 bucks off the door because it was sold out. Yeah. And I went home and I said to my wife, you know what, this is what I should be doing in my life now. So one thing led to another. The first Gods and Monsters started in 89. The band, it started all instrumental. I had two bass players in there. It was a kind of jazz rock group. Then I said, I, can, I gotta start writing songs. I established myself with the group. And at the time, of, I was thinking of just, you know, gee, I wish I had another singer, like a male vocalist. Just at the time, Jeff came along. You know, there was a tribute held in the, uh, this church, St. Anne's Church in Brooklyn. There was a tribute to his dad, Tim Buckley. Yeah. And the organizer, Hal Wilner, who was a producer and a friend of mine, said, you know, his son has called us about appearing at this thing. It was a guy named Jeff Buckley, and I think you'd be good to collaborate with him. He was totally sweet and said to me, Gary Lucas, I love your music, man. So I want to work with you. So right away, we started working on one of his father's songs. And I was thinking right away, this is the singer I really want to work with. Yeah. I composed in one week the music that became Grace and Mojo Pin. They began as my solo guitar instrumentals. One of them, I started fooling with some of the riffs before I had met Jeff and made a cassette and sent it to him. They were titled Rise Up To Be and And You Will. 
a month later, Jeff came back to New York and said, you know that thing you call Rise Up To Be? Now it's called Grace. And Angie Will is called Mojo Pin. And that was the beauty of working with Jeff Buckley. He was such a gifted musician. I totally trusted him. Any music I gave him, I knew he would come back with perfect melodies and lyrics. We went in and recorded these tracks as demos, and you can hear the Grace demo on an album called Songs to No One. And it's available on iTunes. <laughs> and, stuff. and Jeff moved to New York to write with me. Yeah. But as things sometimes happen, there was a lot of forces conspiring against it. Jeff decided not to go ahead after we did a concert at the church, back at the church. Yeah. And, uh, but we continued a friendship. And when he got his big deal with Columbia, he rang me up and said, I really want to do Grace and Mojo Pin. They were great songs and I want to record them. Yeah. And I want you to play on them. And that's, they opened the Grace album. I just kept rolling. I did a very noteworthy album of 30s Chinese pop Wow. Yeah, people are astonished at that. That may be my most popular record. It's called The Edge of Heaven. Even, the, you know, with all the records I've made, I made over 20 records. I live for live. I love to play live for people, and that's where I really excel, I'd say, like in the live arena. That's so cool. I mean, you're keeping totally busy. Yeah. So thanks so much. Thank you.